Welcome back to Breakfast Central. We apologize for that very short break. Um, slight technical issues here and there, but we're back. And of course, the conversation continues this morning with Yunusa Salisutanko, who is a chief uh, spokesperson of the presidential campaign uh, council. And uh, we're still, you know, focusing really on the ministerial portfolios. It did take a while. Uh, the names, of course, were released first, and then eventually they were assigned. And it did come with loads of, you know, conversations in the last 48 hours across Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Tanko, welcome back, and uh, thanks for joining us once again. Thank you very much. Um, I'm right. sorry for your uh, technical hitch or glitch, glitch <laughs> as INEP would say. It happens. It <laughs> happens every now and then. Thank All you. right, let's get back into it. You know, and you know, uh, yesterday I did have a conversation, and I was asking if you know these names and the portfolios that have been uh, assigned basically has set the tone for what Nigerians should expect in the next four years from the current administration. Um, or, it, it, you know, do you expect anything you know, maybe different? No, I, I wouldn't expect anything different from the line of, of what I saw. You see, um, the truth about it is that, had it been that uh, there's this kind of um, way in which you assign portfolios to individuals even before they go to the screening, that way it will give opportunity for those who will screen them to be able to screen them according to portfolio being assigned i.e. we just sample an opinion, uh, an, um, a kind of um, opinion now with regard to the Ministry of Aviation, where his son has been assigned to handle the Ministry of Aviation. At that point in time, we'll have given opportunity for the Senate or any other screening to or public commentators to really um, look into this particular appointees with the portfolios. It gives you room to have a feeling of the capacity of the person that has been assigned. In this situation now, what we are seeing is that individuals are just being uh, assigned a, a portfolio after they have been screened. So there is a politics that takes place within the time in which they have been uh, screened and then the time in which their appointment portfolios is being given to them. Don't be surprised that within that particular period, the executive will sit down with the uh, people in position of power to decide, okay, let's juggle this particular person. Whether he fits in or not, we just give it to him, let him just go and administer that ministry anyhow he can see, so he can do. So in that case, you may not get the full um, uh, kind of output that is expected from that particular individual. And just like I said earlier on, most of these particular individuals are recycled individuals. What are you expecting from somebody who has been a governor in River State? Now become a more or less like um, uh, mean, a, a governor designate in the federal capital territory. You don't expect anything different from what you yeah, saw. But he was, he was praised. So he was praised while you know being River State governor. He was praised for you know doing a lot of projects, you know building bridges and roads and, and the likes. River State is not the federal capital territory. They are quite different two entities entirely. The kind of humongous money he has in his capacity as the governor of River State may not be the same in the federal capital territory. And then the kind of power that he wielded in that particular state may not be the same that he can have in the FCT. The kind of people that he controls and he governs in River State may not be the same thing as the FCT. So there are de different dimensions that will affect that particular productivity that you probably saw in River State in the FCT. So there are different ball game entirely. So whether he will do fine or not do fine is an, it, well, it's left for us to see. And that is exactly happened to every ministry that have been assigned to every individual. So for me, I am not I'm expecting, I am just only out to witness what will become of Nigeria at this particular period of time. All Just right. like I said earlier, no, we are still challenging the pillars in which that even brought in this particular individual abinishu. So, and you cannot put something on nothing until that particular pillar has been strengthened, and then the people have the legitimate right in which to perform. Then probably we cannot start criticizing them or whatever it is that they have been able to do. I mark you, criticism does not only mean that probably you don't like for any person. Criticism only enhances the performance of the person that finds himself in a position of our power to do better or to do well. That is why criticisms are supposed to be welcome. And that is why scholars like some of us, will, even when you are defending your thesis, you are expected to be criticized so okay. that you can do better. Very interesting. All right, now let's talk about something that some people have criticized while some have applauded. And this is, of course, the 
$3 billion crude for oil, uh, crude for cash loan that uh, the NNPCL got from Afrexim Bank. I want to hear your thoughts on it. Is this something that you think is a great initiative or um, are you totally against it? Any loan that is not productively based is a wasteful loan. I'll give you an example. You can take a loan for productive purposes and then you will be able to give a clear-cut decisions or probably uh, reasons for why you took that loan and then these are the input and the productivity of that particular loan. But when you take a loan for consumption basis, most of the loans that we've been taking in this country are basically for consumption basis. They have not been productive in the use. Then we would end up having a humongous debt to pay during our lifetime and probably the lifetime of our children or our grandchildren. So if you want to take a loan or you're getting a grant, a grant probably looks much better because a grant, of course, probably you will also pay the grant in a different way in which most of us do not even know. Major problem that we have in this country as regards to loans or grants or any kind of uh, financial inducement that you will gain from local or foreign in uh, interest is that there's no transparency and accountability on those particular loans. You don't even know exactly what are the conditions of those particular loans and what and the repayment processes are. So the Nigerian people are only let, kept in secrecy of what which this particular government and successive APC government are very much used to. So they, they find it very, very interesting for them. But let us just take the loan and no, probably in the future we'll be able to find a way of paying it or if you don't pay it, we'll have for, for them to even uh, deface the, the, the loans. So these are some of the things. They are not dealing with these loans with the fact that they have been transparent about it and probably what is the purpose of this particular loan, how it's been gotten, and how do we account for it. So these, for me, are some of the areas and the issues that the devil most of the loans that Nigeria have taken over the years. So this particular loan may not be different from what we have seen over the years, because I can tell you, loans that have been taken by the government of um, Jonathan are still there. Loans that have been taken by um, President Muhammad Buhari are still there. Loans that have been taken by uh, Chief Polisha Abbasanjo are still there. Loans that have been taken by um, uh, Yaradua are still there. Not to talk about this individual state loan. In fact, the loans even goes into the local government. So there's no accountability. There is no transparency. Nobody knows which belongs to what. And then the most appalling and the most painful part of it is that it has no progressive effect on the people of the Nigeria of the Nigerian extraction. They don't even feel it. They cannot even see it. Till today, we are low, we are walloping in abject poverty about 200 million people. That is the most saddest part of this. All right, um, uh, Mr. Yunusa, um, I think we can quickly just um, you know get you to speak on how. Uh, the Labour Party maybe would have handled things different. If you can just throw it in as quickly as possible. Exactly. First of all, majority of the targets of what we intend to do are people-driven events. I give you, for example, like now, the government was so much interested in playing to the gallery as quickly as possible by saying, OK, we are removing subsidy, and then let the market forces determine exactly what the prices are and all. What we would have done was this. We know very well that the refineries is the fulcrum of our own economy. In the, temp, in, the, in, the, in, the uh, in the manifestos of Peter Obi, he made it very, very clear that before the refineries can really be up and running, considering the fact that there's a humongous fund of money needed for this particular refinery to work, we, need, we are going to institutionalize like six modular refineries in each of the geographical zones of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that is in the short time loan, the same time process. Because when you have the you know, modular refinery, you don't need to take your, your crude oil outside the country. Because it is your own people who will create employment and at the same time producing this particular product on the spot for, your, for the benefit of your people. Do you know that there are various products being assigned to one crude oil, just a one single bottle of crude oil? Now, you take that particular crude oil outside the country, you come back with only, you manage, not even say, you manage to bring in only um, the, the, the PMS, forgetting about tons of different, different products, which we now give to all other uh, countries who are refining. Why can't you refine it at home? 
Would the Moderna refinery, it would have reduced the cost immediately, and then you will have had the product in-house. In now, when you talk about also the issue of single exchange rate, which we will agree to, but the fact still remains that the single exchange rate will have been forced down in a way in which the dollar will have been almost been running at par with Nigerian currency, meaning that because the majority of the uh, factor that affects this particular dollar exchange is production. And don't forget, Peter Obi has said that it is we are going to devil more in terms of production. Production, production, you subsidize production and so that you you, you subsidize production in order to get the people to be producing. Like you see what we are doing is that we are subsidizing consumption. What labor will have done was to subsidize the right. production. In that way, those cultural items, you invest in them on the table of every Nigeria from right. the local level. We have a... Unfortunately, we've come to the end of this uh, segment because we're running out of time. But, Mr. Yunisa, thank you for your time with us this morning. Uh, we, of course, are counting down to the days where we can talk about the presidential election petition tribunal judgment. And we hope that we can have you back after the judgment has uh, come out. But thank you very much for your time with us this morning. Thank you very much. And God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. All right.